birthday might not be as harmless as you think. Studies show people are way more likely to die on or around their birthday, but why? Somewhere out there, our entire galaxy is being dragged through space towards something. What is it? Nobody knows. And there's a weird phenomena where ancient traits from long dead ancestors can suddenly reappear. These are disturbing anomalies in science that shouldn't exist. Is your birthday coming up even worse? Is it your birthday right now? Why do I say even worse? Well, you wanna be careful. Ever heard of the birthday effect? Basically, researchers noticed something strange when they looked at millions of death records. People seem more likely to die on or right around their birthday. In Switzerland, one huge study found that deaths on someone's actual birthday were about 17% higher than normal. In the US, a study of 25 million deaths showed around 7% more people died on their birthday than expected. And this is nuts. In Ukraine, the numbers were even scarier. Men had a 44% higher chance of dying on their birthday. I mean, my God, I kind of dread my birthday like every year at this point in my life, but I don't think I'm actually gonna drop dead. You know, just that I'm one step closer to death, you know? Apparently the Grim Reaper considers crashing your birthday party every year though. So why are, do they seem to be more deaths around people's birthdays? Well, increased risky behavior could be a factor. You're more likely to be out partying, but there's also stress. Birthdays can be a heavy reminder of aging, regrets, the fear of mortality. And for people already struggling, that can push them over the edge. Some terminally ill people even seem to hold on until their birthday, which then adds to the statistic. We don't really have a definitive reason though, but maybe there isn't one. It's likely a mix of all these things, but study after study across different countries and cultures, the pattern just keeps popping up, so. Happy birthday. Here's another thing that's pretty nuts. Our entire galaxy is being dragged through space by something we can't actually see. Back in the 70s, astronomers noticed that the Milky Way, along with thousands of other galaxies, aren't just drifting randomly. They're all moving in the same direction, like we are caught in some invisible current. And the spot they seem to be heading toward is what scientists call the Great Attractor. Again though, we can't actually see it. Our own galaxy blocks the view. In 2016 though, researchers using a massive radio telescope in Australia managed to peek past the Milky Way and spotted almost 900 galaxies packed into that area. That's a lot of gravitational pull right there, but some scientists think even those galaxies might just be victims as well, getting yanked in along with us. Imagine someone suddenly being born with especially large canine teeth. Our distant ancestors had these, but over time, as we've evolved, we don't really need them anymore. Now our canines look pretty much like the rest of our teeth, but there's a strange phenomenon called atavism. This is where traits from our distant ancestors suddenly show up again, even though they've been gone for millions of years. The DNA for those old traits is still buried inside us. It's just kind of switched off. But every once in a while, something goes wrong in development and the switch flips back on. That's when you get rare cases like babies born with small tails, people with extra nipples, or unusually large ape-like teeth. It doesn't just happen in humans. Whales and dolphins, which evolved from land and animals have been found with tiny hind legs still forming inside their bodies. Birds, which are technically living dinosaurs, have been experimented on in labs where scientists managed to reactivate dormant genes and grow teeth in their beaks. Yeah, Jurassic Park doesn't seem as far-fetched now, does it? One of the strangest weather events you'll ever hear about is animals falling from the sky. Quite literally, when fish, frogs, spiders, the list goes on, fall out of the sky. Yes, you're more likely to hear stories like this from old nursery rhymes than, you know, on the news, but there have actually been documented cases of this. In Honduras, for example, there's a yearly event called the Rain of Fish, where after big storms, people claim to find fish scattered across the streets. Similar stories go way back. Pliny the Elder in ancient Rome wrote about frogs and fish falling from the sky. And in 1794, French soldiers swore they saw toads raining down during a storm. So how does this actually happen? The most common explanation is water spouts or tornadoes. Basically a tornado forms over water, sucks up you know, lightweight animals like fish or frogs and then drops them miles away. The problem is no one's actually seen that part happen. So it's still a theory and it doesn't explain why it's usually just one type of animal falling, not like a mix of whatever else got caught up. Birds may play a role as well. Sometimes they drop fish mid-flight, which 
Could explain more modern events like the 2021 fish rain in Texarkana, Texas, where people found chewed up fish all over their yards after a storm. I think that was a bit of a different situation though. Still, there are cases like frogs falling in England in the 80s that don't have such neat explanations. So animal rain is still one of the weirdest natural mysteries in the world. In Northern Australia, there's this strange cloud formation called the Morning Glory Cloud, and it shows up as a massive rolling tube that can stretch for hundreds of miles across the sky. It moves almost like a giant wave in the atmosphere. What's weird is, even with all the weather science we have, no one can fully explain this. Best guess is that it happens when sea breezes and humid air collide during the seasonal change from dry to wet. But even then, meteorologists can't actually predict when one will appear. To this day, we still don't have a solid scientific explanation. Every so often, people come across this strange goo on the ground after a heavy rain or following a meteor shower. It's called star jelly. It looks like these slimy, translucent blobs. Nobody actually knows what it is for sure. Some scientists think it might have something to do with frog or toad eggs, kind of like leftover spawn that's been disturbed. But it could also be a mix of algae, fungi, and bacteria You'd think it'd be easy for scientists, you know, to just grab a sample and then study it. But the problem is, the stuff vanishes before anyone can get a good look at it. It dries up or evaporates so fast that researchers are often left with nothing but a photo. In old stories, people believed it fell from the stars, hence the name. And even today, there are theories about it coming from space. Star jelly sometimes showing up after meteor showers. That definitely seems to lend itself to that idea. But, you know, maybe aliens flying past Earth just have extra goo. They got they got dump. They got dump it somewhere every once in a while. There's a strange rare mushroom called the Devil's Cigar. You'll only ever find it in two places on Earth, a handful of counties in Texas a few forests in Japan. That is it. Scientists can't explain why it only shows up in these two spots. They're thousands of miles apart. And not to mention, I mean, I don't know about you, but I cannot think of two places more polar opposite than Japan and Texas. Nothing really scientific about that, I just thought I'd add. When this mushroom first grows, it looks like a dark shriveled cigar sticking out of the ground or from an old tree stump. But then it suddenly splits open with a sharp hissing sound, releasing a puff of smoky spores. And it spreads out in this star-like shape, earning it another nickname, the Texas Star. DNA studies have shown that the Texas and Japanese populations of this fungus have been separated for nearly 19 million years. That means they've been growing apart on opposite sides of the planet since long before humans even existed. Why they survived in only those two places is still a total mystery. Back in 1883, long before anyone was talking about UFOs, a Mexican astronomer named Jose Bonilla spotted something so strange, people are still talking about it today, including me. He was at the Zacatecas Observatory studying sunspots. Suddenly he noticed dark shapes moving across the face of the sun. Hundreds of them they were zipping by at a good clip too, all going in the same direction. Whatever they were, they definitely weren't normal. Vanilla did what any astronomer in his position would do. He grabbed his setup, basically a telescope with a bulky camera attached, and started snapping photos. By the time he was done, he documented over 300 of these things. He published his findings in a scientific journal, describing them as flying bodies. But he didn't make any wild claims, he just recorded what he saw. Explanations have poured in over the years. Maybe it was just geese flying really high, maybe clumps of dust or meteors passing by, but those explanations don't really add up, at least not enough for some scientists out there, because this case is still considered unsolved. One of the weirdest mysteries in space travel is something called the flyby anomaly. Basically, when a spacecraft swings by a planet like Earth to get a speed boost, sometimes ends up moving slightly faster than scientists expect. It's tiny, fractions of a millimeter per second, but with the super precise tracking we do today, even that little bit is noticeable, and no one really knows why it happens. The first time anyone noticed this was back in 1990, when the Galileo spacecraft zipped past Earth. Engineers noticed the data didn't match their calculations, a small but clear speed bump that shouldn't have been there. Later missions like Near, Cassini, and Rosetta all reported similar strange increases, but not every flyby showed it. For instance, Messenger and Juno's flybys seemed normal, which has led some scientists to wonder if the effect has to do with Earth's rotation or the exact path the spacecraft takes. Teams at NASA and other space agencies have combed through every possible explanation though, but 
nothing quite fits perfectly. And finally, we have the coronal heating problem. The sun's surface sits at about 6,000 kelvins, but its outer atmosphere, the corona, can reach millions of kelvins. The corona is way hotter than the surface, and by normal rules of heat, that just shouldn't happen, right? Heat naturally flows from hot to cold, not the other way around. So something unusual has to be transferring energy upward. The area where this crazy temperature jump happens is called the transition region, just a few tens to hundreds of kilometers thick. Scientists think two processes are most likely happening here. One idea is that waves moving through the sun's super hot charged gas could be carrying energy up. Another idea is that the sun's magnetic field sometimes twists so tightly that they snap, releasing tiny bursts of energy, like mini explosions that heat up the corona. But even with all this research, the coronal heating problem is still one of the biggest mysteries in space science. I've been your host, James. I will catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.